Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is going to be a rather random video because it has recently come to my attention that Intel has added a new memory timing to the memory controller of their 13th gen uh, Intel CPUs, and that timing is called TRCDW. Um, if you're, you know, if you've done memory overclocking on AM4, you might kind of recognize this because this is Intel's in equivalent of TRCDWR which we had on, uh, you know, AM4 motherboards, uh, or more like AM4 CPUs, because the, the timing registers are not in the motherboard, they're in the CPU, so, you know, it's not really up to the motherboard to, Im like, it's not implemented by the motherboard. Like, the motherboard's BIOS allows you to adjust the configuration of the CPU's registers, but if the CPU doesn't have a TRCDW register, then you can't adjust that timing because it doesn't exist. Which, for example, is the case with uh, 12th gen Intel CPUs. If you try to look up TRCDW, you won't find it because they don't have it. Um, it's really that simple. Th those just had a TRCD, and that was used for both uh, read and write uh, activations. So you, well, for going from an activation command, from an act command to a read or write command. Now, what TRCDW does is that we now have the option to have a different delay going from an activate command to a read command, which is still controlled by TRCD, um, and an activate command to a write command. And this is kind of neat because for write operations, you don't really need to wait very long for the row activation to complete because we're going to get into that. So, the, like, the reason you can do this with TRCDWR, and it works the same way for both DDR5 and DDR4, um, the reason why TRCDWR can be so incredibly low uh, is because of how uh, data flows through the memory. So, here we have a DDR4 block diagram, because I couldn't find a DDR5 block diagram on short notice. And basically, during a read operation, right, you send a... Uh, read command to the memory chip, so, well, you actually send an activation command first. So you send an activation command to the memory chip, uh, you know, asking it to activate a row. So that comes in through this end, you have your various commands over here, you have your address bus down here, so, you know, it comes, comes in on this end of the memory chip, and then the memory chip goes and has to, uh, you know, activate a row, and during the row activation, basically the sense amplifiers over here will amplify whatever data is stored in whatever row you requested. So, um, you know, if you're doing a read, uh, you kind of have to wait for those sense amplifiers to complete the amplification of the data that is stored in the memory array, because if you don't give them enough time to, you know, amplify the data that's stored in the memory array, and you start, you know, pulling data out of the memory and out onto the data bus is going to be a whole lot of garbage, is what, what you're going to be reading, right? Like, you're, you're just going to read trash, basically. Um, so, uh, you have to wait. You, you have to <laughs> wait for the sense amplifiers to, to amplify the data during a read operation. However, during a write operation, we don't care about reading the data, right? Like, we literally could not care less what data is currently in the memory array because we are writing over it. And this is why TRCDWR can be so incredibly low, because during a write operation, we send data in through the data queue, and actually I screwed that up, it goes in, it hits the write drivers, and then it goes through all of this gating stuff, and then we just write that data directly into the memory array, bypassing the sense amplifiers. So, regardless of if the sense amplifiers actually read the data from the memory array correctly or incorrectly, we don't care, we're not reading it, right? We're writing over the data. So, that's why you can set TRCDWR so incredibly low, because we just don't care about, <laughs> like, what, what data is currently in the uh, currently in the memory array. Now, during a read operation, yeah, you need to wait for the activation, for the row activation to complete correctly, because if it isn't finished by the time you send your read command, you're going to be getting sent a whole lot of garbage, right? So, that's why TRCDWR can be so incredibly low. Now, one of the concerns you might have is like, well, if I have really low TRCDWR, what if I go from a write command to a read command, right? Like, I do... You know, we, we basically skip the activation delay, do the write, and then immediately go to a read. And, well, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about that because write to write, 
well, you have the right to read timing. Um, and this timing is very loose. Like, I don't actually have any screenshots on hand, but, um, and the re like, Intel implements this differently. On Ryzen, you have WTR, uh, WTRL, well, actually, in this case, it would be WTRL that applies, right? Because you're reading, you're doing that read operation from the same row. So basically, on a Ryzen CPU, what happens is you have, like, if you look at the chain of, like, activate, write, and then you want to do a read, you know, what if the sense amplifiers haven't, you know, like, amplified the data in the memory array correctly? Well, you do your TRCDWR, so you do activate plus eight cycles, then you do CAS write latency, so plus 14 cycles, and at this point we're already at 22 cycles, so we don't have to worry about it. And then on Ryzen, you have the write to read delay, which I think starts at the end of a write command, or it start. I'm pretty sure it starts, yeah, it actually has to end at the, it starts after the write operation completes, I think, yeah. Um, something like that. So basically, you know, you do 8 plus 14 plus 7, and that is so much larger than TRCDRD that by that point in time, your row activation is actually complete anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, and on Intel CPUs, you have TWRRD, um, which starts at the write command, as far as I'm aware. Um, WRRD at, say, 6400 megabits per second is going to be like 60 cycles or like 56 cycles way, way higher than your TRCD, right? So you do your TRCDWR of, so you go ACT plus TRCDWR plus write to read delay, and you're again well clear of the TRCD read timing, so you're not going to have like, like you're not going to have a problem of like, uh, skip the activate, like skip most of the activation, write some data, then immediately try to read some data, and that data ends up being corrupted because the sense amplifiers haven't amplified the data. That's not going to happen because the delay between a write operation and a read operation is just absolutely massive. It takes forever to go from one to the other. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. So that's neat. Now, what does this mean for performance? Unfortunately, not much because. <laughs> Uh, the TRCDWR time, uh, like TRCDW is unfortunate, like it's only used for write, like going from an activate to a write command. Uh, and so it reduces the write latency, right? Like your write, like write operations take less time to start. However, uh, generally speaking, CPUs are not write performance limited. Write operations are generally not latency limited either. And so being able to write a couple cycles or even, you know, on, on DDR5, TRCD regularly is in like the 30s. And you can actually just set the TRCDW to 8 again because that's the minimum uh, accepted value on the register. But the thing is, like, saving 20 cycles on, like, a write operation just doesn't really... And it's not even, like, a complete write operation on a single... Right, like at the on the start of a potential write operation, because if you're doing like many consecutive writes, um, this doesn't speed up the actual like write to write to write to write delays, because that's a different timing, right? This literally just means if you're doing a big long write chain, you can start that chain of writes some like thirty cycles earlier than usual, um, which sounds really impressive until you consider that like. <laughs> you know, we're, you're generally not write limited in the first place. You're probably not going to be writing a single burst at a time. Uh, so yeah, like the, the thing is on, on Ryzen, a lot of people will tell you like this time, like, I think a lot of people think this timing doesn't actually do anything because the performance impact of it is minimal, but I have gone out of my way to actually measure that. Yes. Lowering TRCDWR does actually improve performance, but because most operations, or like the vast majority of operations, are not write latency limited, it doesn't really do much, right? Your CPU is generally read latency limited, um, because during a read operation, well, we probably, like, you know, the reason why read operations tend to be latency limited is like, let's say we're doing a calculation, and the data we need for that calculation is not in the cache, so we need to go get that data from the RAM. That is a latency, you know, latency and potentially bandwidth limited situation, depending on how much data we actually need to get in for that calculation. Um, write operations, that's just kind of like, eh, write the data to the memory whenever you happen to have available time. 
kind of situation. This is also why like single CCD Ryzen CPUs have like a huge imbalance between their read bandwidth and their write bandwidth because write operations aren't that important. Um, so yeah, um, it, it's cool that Intel has added this timing and in theory, it should be basically possible to just smash it to eight and call it a day. Like it really shouldn't affect stability. Uh, on DDR4, like, I went through pretty much every memory chip in my DDR4 collection. I couldn't find any memory chip that couldn't do a TRCDWR of 8. Um, I imagine with DDR5 it's going to be the same kind of thing, because, again, it just, like, you know, the whole reason we have TRCD is so that you don't accidentally try to read data before the sense amplifiers have managed to amplify it, but if you're not reading anything, that's not a concern, we're, you know, writing data to the memory array, so actually waiting for the sense amplifiers to complete the row activation, kind of, like, it just doesn't matter during a write operation, which is why TRCDWR exists. However, also, write operations aren't really much of a performance bottleneck, so this timing is, like, it's neat that you can do this, um, and, yeah, like, it, it might, there might be some workloads where it see like, a very, very slight improvement in performance. Like, this, this is the kind of thing where, like, this is one of those timings where you can actually lower it from, like, 40 or 30 all the way down to 8, and it just doesn't have much of a performance impact. It's a real pain to, to benchmark, like, um, and, and so the, the thing is, like, yeah, it's, it's probably not going to do much for performance. At the same time, it shouldn't affect stability in any way, shape, or form, because, like I said, we do not care about skipping the row activation if we're doing a write, because we're not reading the data that's currently in the row. So we don't care if that data is correctly, you know, uh, being amplified by the sense amplifiers. Like, this is just not a concern. So, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool that Intel has added this timing. Uh, it's not accessible on all motherboards yet. Um, I've still not been able to, like, I've still not gotten around to actually testing it myself, but I've seen screenshots from other people, and it behaves exactly as I would expect it to behave, because, like, it's just TRCDWR, except now we have it on Intel CPUs. Um, so that's neat. Um, and yeah, and I figured I'd just make this video about this. Because I wanted to actually make a video about TRCDWR on Ryzen, and, and why it is that you can do this, like, set it super duper low, and it doesn't do... Like, it both doesn't trash your stability, but also doesn't really change your performance that much. Um, and so I just kind of have the excuse to, to make that video again. Uh, well, make that video now, but with DDR5. So that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it for the video. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon, there's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch, and there's a link to that down in the description. And I've also got a band camp if for some reason you want to listen to industrial noise. Um, yeah, there's, there's a link to that down in the description below as well. And that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and goodbye.